I'm Yvonne Fuchs from Quilting Jet Girl. Today I'm going to walk you through how to create a digital circuit board quilting motif either on your domestic machine or on a long arm. Let's start by taking a look at what I mean by a circuit board. Circuit boards or printed circuit boards are thin plates containing electronic components mostly found in electrical and communication devices. Circuit boards can be found in computers, televisions, cell phones, and other telecommunication devices. A printed circuit board mechanically supports and electrically connects electric components such as capacitors, resistors, or active devices using conductive tracks. When a power supply introduces an electrical charge to the board, it is distributed along those tracks to different components in a variety of ways. This lets a board control how the components are activated and charged during the use of an electrical device. This is an example of a printed circuit board with the traces created prior to the components being soldered to their mounts. I used the printed traces as inspiration to create a circuit board quilting motif. So enough about all the technical details. Let's take a look at how to start quilting a digital circuit board quilting motif. The first place I like to start when I'm learning any new quilting motif is with paper and pencil. When I'm thinking about the circuit board quilting motif, I'm thinking about it in a very linear aspect. I know that the circuit boards that we just looked at had some off angles, but for me, creating this motif is going to be easier if I keep things vertical and horizontal. So picking a starting point, I move around the page and I think about moving horizontally and vertically and filling in spaces. So sometimes I can bounce up and down as if I'm connecting components above and below. Sometimes I can move side to side. And when I'm done with an area, I can bounce out and move somewhere else and start filling in as well. There are other ways you can move around and explore. If you create a boxy spiral, like I just did, just remember to leave yourself enough room that you can backtrack on your way out. So this is just an example of some of the ideas that I had in mind when I was quilting Digital Wave, where I first explored the digital quilting circuit board technique. Again, my idea was just to keep things boxy, moving in horizontal and vertical lines. Sometimes the lines can be closer together, sometimes they're further apart. And as you can see, my freehand sketching isn't exactly perfect, and your quilting won't be either. That's okay, it adds some character, and honestly, once the quilt is washed, you're not gonna see those lines wavering just a little bit with the extra crinkle and texture that are added in. So once you have played around and are comfortable sketching like I just did, you can move to your sewing machine. First, I'm going to show how I would transform this sketch idea on a domestic sit-down machine. I've created a simple fat quarter basted quilt sandwich with a slightly different darker backing than the top and I'm using a contrasting thread. In this case, I'm using Aurifil 50 weight 1148, which is a jade kind of color. So I'm going to start uh, creating the circuit board quilting motif at one edge of my quilting sandwich. To start, just like any free motion quilting technique, and I guess this is another thing I should point out, I have on my free motion walking foot. So I'm not doing this using a walking foot. If I were going to use a walking foot, I'd be turning the quilt sandwich to move forward, turn, move forward, turn, and that would end up just rotating and rotating and moving a quilt sandwich around. For the purposes of this demonstration, using a fat quarter, that would be one thing. But for a larger quilt size, that would be really exhausting and daunting work. So instead, I am suggesting that if you're going to be doing this technique on your domestic machine, that you will be wanting to use a free motion quilting foot. So I'm going to move to the edge of my quilt sandwich, put my needle down and back up, use the tail of my thread to sweep under and pull up the bobbin thread. And then what I like to do is simply put my needle up and down in roughly the same spot. 
a few times to kind of lock the stitches in. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to snip my tail a little bit short. And again, I didn't do that perfect because I'm on the edge of the quilt sandwich and I know that that can be trimmed off later. So just like when we were sketching with a pencil, I'm going to be trying to move in vertical and horizontal lines. So once I get started, I'll be moving the quilt around. And anytime I get to a corner where I want to change direction, I'm going to pause for a stitch or two to let that corner be crisp. So I was moving a little slowly there. Um, one of the things I like to tell people when I'm teaching free motion quilting is to put the pedal to the metal, and I wasn't actually doing that in this case. So now what I'm going to do is move at a more realistic speed, and I'm going to put my uh, pedal down so that way I don't wear out my calf and my foot as I am continuing to move along. Okay. So in that case, you'll see that the needle is moving way faster than I could keep up with, and my stitches are very small. Another great demonstration here. So I'm going to turn down, move over to my position on the other side of the machine, and turn down the needle speed uh, just a little bit, and try again. In that case, it's moving again a little slow, so I overdid it, overshot, and I'll just keep adjusting as I move forward. When I get to the edge of where I feel like my hands are in a comfortable spot, I will stop. And one of the things I like about my machine is it automatically stops with the needle down. And if yours doesn't, I suggest stopping, putting the needle down, and then lifting your hands to reposition, getting comfortable, and moving forward again. how I would continue as I moved around on a domestic machine. Again, this is actually more of a sample on the demo piece, and so this would be actually honestly something I would recommend that you start with, maybe not even in the size of a fat quarter, but with some scraps and some scrap batting, and getting an idea of how fast you want to set your needle speed and the stitch length, and getting comfortable with the technique once you move to your machine. After you've done that and become very comfortable with the way things are looking, then you can move on to your actual quilt sandwich. Now I have moved that same fat quarter over to my long arm. And for those of you who do not have a long arm, I still think that there might be a few tips that you can find as I'm talking through this process uh, that might be beneficial to you even if you're quilting on your domestic machine. So I've moved the same fat quarter set uh, over to my long arm and I have the same 50 weight Orofil 1148 uh, green thread loaded onto the machine. And again, to get started, I'm just going to move the needle up and down and use the tail of the thread to swipe under and pull the bobbin thread up. Then I'll just do a few securing stitches to be ready to go. Once I get ready to go, I'll be moving in the same vertical and horizontal ways that we've been practicing this entire time. One thing that I will mention is that I found it was the most interesting and beneficial to have little zones, little pockets of areas that I was doing fill work in. So kind of create an idea in your head of a space that you want to fill, whether that's a block or an area that you outline, like this. And then go back and fill that area in. And playing around. 
around with different ways to move around the spaces. you've worked yourself into a corner and there's nowhere left to go, and you just can't see how to move forward, simply stop, tie off, and start again. There's nothing wrong with saying this is where that particular strand comes to an end, and just pick up and move forward. I hope this gives you some ideas for how you might want to incorporate circuit board quilting into your own projects. I look forward to seeing how you use it.